Hello, my name is David Johnson with Denison Yachting. I'm uh, here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida at the Sunrise Harbor Marina. Tom George from the One Water Group invited me to come on board Temptation. Temptation is a 123-foot Palmer Johnson built in 2005. She's had a couple of big refits, including the most recent one was in 2019. The entire hull was painted gray and she looks amazing. I'd like to take some time, show you around the sun deck right now. Uh, let's start with the, with the helm. Got a couple nice helm chairs here and a, a nice array of electronics. Everything has been updated, all the charts are current. You've got a huge sun deck here and the recent installation of this hard top right here was a, uh, a great addition. Something the boat needed, it still feels very modern and has a great look to it. Working our way aft here on the flybridge, uh, there's a beautiful teak dining table that has a beautiful settee. All the upholstery on all the exterior furniture is new. It looks great, colorful design. This table will accommodate 10 guests in comfort. And then as you work our way over to the port side, there's a nice large bar here. Behind the bar, you're gonna find two wine refrigerators, an ice machine, a sink, and a lot of room for preparing drinks and hors d'oeuvres and serving some food over to the guests having dinner. Something else that's a nice addition on this boat is a proper commercial electric grill here, something the chef will definitely appreciate. Even more aft here on the flybridge, a couple things we wanna point out. This beautiful hardtop, you can see here is where it opens up. So when you're hanging out here on the sun pads, you've got all the sun shining through right where you want it. Jacuzzi here, which is really nice. It's not a little tiny jacuzzi where you're trying to stuff a bunch of people in there. The VSAT and all the audio video was replaced in 2020. So the boat is as high tech as it can be right now. Everything's been replaced in terms of communication and audio video. Off in the distance, you can see a lot of clouds, so we're not gonna bother taking the covers off the uh, jet skis and the tender. But I would like to point out, you've got two Sea-Doo's that were bought new in 2019, and you've got a 15-foot Novarania. All three of these toys will be launched by a 3,000-pound tender crane here. Toys are ready to go, ready for charter. Now that I've shown you the sun deck, we're gonna work our way down to the main deck. First thing I see down here on this spacious aft deck, another great bar here. Behind the bar, we've got a large wine refrigerator and ice machine here, and lots of room for the crew to prepare some food before they serve it over there. Other items found back here, a large dining table. You feel how big the space is here. This boat actually has a 25 foot beam. It's called the wide body version, and that's because there's no side decks on this boat. Everything is full beam, whether you're standing here on the aft deck or when you're in the main salon. It's got a nice Marquardt boarding ladder here. It's also a Euro-style transom, so you've got staircases on port and starboard side, wide staircases, making it easy to get down to the swim platform. First thing you're gonna notice is that there's a lot of room down here, whether you're getting your towing harness ready for your tow tender, you're putting on your scuba diving gear. They got substantial gates here. Everything's covered in teak, which is nice, keeps people from slipping. This is also the entry into the engine room. The first of the two technical spaces is the lazarette. Uh, currently standing here in the lazarette. It's a little bit noisy down here, and uh, that noise is coming from shore power units. This is used to condition the shore power as it comes into the boat. It's got a Glen Denning shore power unit. It's got a water softening system. Back over on this side over here, you're gonna find the control panels for the generators and the breakers that supply the electrical to the rest of the boat. From this point, we'll work our way into the engine room. First thing I should point out in here is that it's a little bit noisy while we're standing in here as well. That's coming from the air conditioning plant over here. These chillers were replaced and the water circulation pump was also replaced in October of 21. Got two MTU 16V2000 main engines, each put out 1800 horsepower. Recently boroscoped, these engines are good for many thousands of hours. No need to do any work on these engines right now. Working our way over to the port side, we've got two water makers. Each water maker has a 1,500 gallon per day capacity. Looking at the engine room down here, you can see this is a boat that is really well maintained. The deck plates have been painted. There's no signs of any oil leaks anywhere, any water leaks. It looks really good. Working our way over to the starboard side, it's got a, a Alpha Laval fuel polishing system. Your quantum stabilizers. One unique thing I just noticed that you normally wouldn't find is a full shower here on top of the main engine. This shower actually gets hooked up into the swim platform, kind of slides into a slot in the swim platform, and you've got a proper shower back there with uh, hot and cold water, which is uh, really nice for when you come out of the water on a chilly day. 
One more, I used to say two more items I'd like to point out are the two uh, Northern Lights 16 kilowatt generators that we see here. Generators have about 10,000 hours on them, I believe. These have also been recently serviced and are, are ready to go for another 10,000 hours. Here on the foredeck, this is a proper working deck on this boat. It's not covered in teak. You've got non-skid here, which is um, just less maintenance for the crew. Uh, this is an area where you've got fenders being stored. You've got your, your anchors dropping left and right. A lot of working space up here. Easy access up to the brow up there. If you wanted to put some sun pads up there, you most certainly could. Overall, the paint, the non-skid, the, the ground tackle, just everything looks really clean up here. Having shown you the engineering spaces, let's take a look at the finer spaces, which is gonna be the inside of the boat. Walking into the main salon, it's really easy on this boat. No confusing buttons. There's, there's one button here to press, which is actually very nice. Come on inside. Once again, just like on the aft deck, you really feel that they utilized every inch of the 25 foot beam. This is a spacious salon for a 123 foot yacht, giant L-shaped sofa, and some poofs here to kind of pull out so the whole family can watch some movies. Taking a look at this dining area here, this is a huge formal dining area. Uh, I mean, you've actually got proper sized chairs here, table big enough to comfortably fit eight guests, no need to try and squeeze in more chairs. This is a uh, perfect setup for this boat. Something else uh, I didn't point out earlier is that all the headliners in this salon um, have also been recently replaced. This salon feels like a new room. It's, uh, it's got a good feel to it. From here, you've got uh, access up to the, the, the foyer. We're gonna work our way there soon, but for now, let's check out the galley. Working our way into the galley, uh, I gotta remind myself that we're on a 123 foot yacht because the galley on the Temptation is considerably larger than you would normally find on a yacht this size. First thing I'd like to point out is that you've got two really large refrigerators here and four freezer drawers down below. Two mealy ovens, an induction cooktop, lots of storage all below the cabinets here. And you've got a nice large sink right here. Working our way to the second part of this large galley, this would be more for the stewardess to prep for the, the dinners, help the chef out with some dishes. As you work our way forward here, we're gonna see there's a lot of storage underneath and up above an even larger sink here, and then you've got a dishwasher, a microwave forward of there. This is a nice cool area. You've got the air conditioning blowing right down here. It feels great, especially on a really busy day. Nice access to the foredeck right here as well. Easy in, easy out. There's actually a boarding gate right here. So when the boat is in the marina, it's real easy for this gate to be opened up and that they can just hand in all the groceries or anything else that needs to come into the galley or down to the crew area. Located conveniently close to the chef's galley is actually the entrance down into the crew accommodations. Down here in the crew area, it's a really nice layout in here. First thing we see right away is the first set of washers and dryers. Here you've got a refrigerator for drinks and some you know, milk and stuff for the crew, a microwave, lots of storage, full-size sink. As we work our way over here to the starboard side, the crew settee, you can easily fit the whole crew behind the settee here. You got a ship's monitoring system, tank sentry, separate monitor for security cameras. From the crew lounge, we're gonna work our way forward and uh, we'll start off by showing you the first of four crew cabins. This cabin right here is set up for, uh, it's kind of an engineer's cabin, full-size bed. Every crew cabin has their own toilet and shower, which is really nice. Wrapping up down here in the crew accommodations, we're gonna work our way upstairs up to the main foyer. Wrapping up in the galley and crew area, we're gonna work our way forward. Uh, I'll be pointing out the uh, wheelhouse, master cabin, guest accommodations. So as we're walking up, we've got the stairs leading down to the three guest cabins down in the lower deck. Forward of the guest accommodation stairs, we've got a day head finished off really nice. We've got a door leading out to the starboard deck and boarding gate, master cabin, and wheelhouse. One of the first things I notice here in the, the wheelhouse of the Temptation is that it's, it's quite large. A lot of times the wheelhouse will be in a cramped area because you don't have a lot of usable space. You definitely do not feel cramped in this wheelhouse. It's a great space overall. You've got a really wide helm 
you've got an abundance of screens that you can access everything from your fish finder to your, your navigation, your wind speed. Between the Furuno gauges and, and control panels, you've just got a really nice setup right here. The upholstery throughout is also in really nice condition. A lot of times you'll notice that on the, uh, the armrests here on the, on the bridge helm chairs that they're kind of worn. This one's definitely been reupholstered. It looks great. Another thing I'd like to point out is that we're in South Florida. It's really hot outside right now. It's nice and cool in this wheel wheelhouse ex-captains like myself we all know that the wheelhouse does tend to get pretty hot especially in these raised pilot house boats it's a hot day out there and it's nice and cool in here right now here on the aft side of the wheelhouse uh, we've got the stairs that lead up to the flybridge we've already been up there so now we're going to work our way down to the main deck and into the master cabin here we go we are in the uh, master cabin full beam on the main deck Something I'd like to point out is that this is a four stateroom boat. A lot of people will try and pack five staterooms into a boat this size. The owner was, uh, in my opinion, smart when he had this boat built and he specified a four stateroom so that all the guests would have a big space rather than having too many people and not enough crew to look after, you know, a total of 10 guests. Very large California King bed in here. This boat is all about luxury. It's got two large uh, walk-in closets that are cedar lined a nice desk to get some work done, as well as a little seating area over here on the port side. When it comes to the layout of the ensuite, it's got a his and hers layout with a shower in the middle. As we work our way back aft now, we're gonna walk uh, past the wheelhouse, past the day head, and right down into the guest accommodations down on the lower deck. Here at the foot of the stairs is the lower companionway. Um, this is a great area. It's gonna lead into the three remaining guest staterooms. Uh, a couple things I'd like to point out. One very important item on a yacht. This is the second set of washers and dryers. And in here, you'll find a nice LG commercial set of washers and dryers. You've also got a really nice coffee nook right here. Th this way in the morning, the guests can come out, have a little coffee, and then go back into their cabin, get ready for the day. Variety of good storage right here for cleaning supplies, ironing, you name it. Anything a stewardess can need, it's gonna be in there. After the lower foyer, We've got the uh, full beam VIP. This VIP has got a uh, pretty standard layout, good use of space. We've got a full walk-in closet over there on the, on the port side aft, another large closet forward, desk area here, little seating area. After the VIP, we're gonna find the ensuite. You've got a marble countertop, marble floor, gold fixtures, and then a large shower that's got a nice bench in it. Wrapping up in the VIP, we're gonna work our way forward to the two remaining cabins. These are the uh, twin cabins. Nice arrangement, good use of space up here. Pretty standard what you're gonna find on most yachts. These two are identical. We call it kind of a, a mirror kind of look. This room's got a nice TV. I would like to point out again that all the audio video on this boat has been updated. So you're gonna have the best of everything if you spend any time down here. One thing that I haven't pointed out yet is that this boat has uh, had a very successful charter history. Boat charters out for about $75,000 a week, which makes it really appealing to some buyers. You can offset a lot of your annual operating costs by uh, putting this boat out for charter. This one happens to be very successful because of the four cabin arrangement. I'm a big fan of this boat now. Just spending a little bit of time on board, I realize that she's in excellent condition. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me directly.